to bleed the brakes. Um, now I'm going to take off a little rubber cap here. And with an eight millimeter, I can loosen the bolt that was on there. This is a one man bleeder. It's got a magnet to hold it on. This goes onto the nipple and it's used to take out most of the air out of the brake system. Because this tube goes all the way down into the bottle, the air, once it comes in the bottle, won't be able to come back out. It works sort of like a P-trap. The nipple up there is a little bit too big for the tube we had on, so we put an adapter in the bigger tube, and now it fits right on there. And we're ready to start bleeding. There's two kinds of brake bleeding. You can have one man and two man. We're gonna start out with one man and have an assistant just pumping the brakes and we'll watch it come out into the bottle. Now I'm going to make sure that the bleeder is open and have my assistant start pressing the brakes. Go ahead and start pressing. You can see a lot of air bubbles coming out of the system. So I'm going to, now that the bottle is full, close up the valve so that we can take off our bottle because um, it's full. And you can see that the fluid looks pretty dirty. So we're probably just going to bleed until um, we get clean fluid again since it's pretty bad. I like to save the old brake fluid, um, not for brakes, but it's useful for other things. As we're bleeding, we need to make sure that the fluid level doesn't get too low, so we're going to go ahead and add more. The reservoir is all the way in the back, can't really fit anything back there, so I have a tube um, leading all the way up to a funnel here. So I'll just add it in, making sure it doesn't overflow. You can just stick your finger in the reservoir to feel the level if you need to. Make sure that you're using dot .3, that's the reason for our operation. You can see clearly on the lid that it's labeled we need dot three. You can see how clear this is compared to the dirty green stuff that was coming out the other end. We're seeing less air coming out of the bottle now, but it still looks pretty dirty, so we'll keep going. The fluid is looking a lot cleaner now, so we're going to switch from the one-man system to the two-man system to finish it up. For the two-man bleed, I'm going to begin with the valve closed. My assistant is going to pump the brakes and hold them, which is going to build pressure. And then I'm going to open it back up again, let the pressure out and into the bottle, and then close it again, and then he can release the brakes. Make sure this is on firmly. So with the, with the valve closed, I will have my assistant pump and hold. And then release the pressure and close it back up again. And then you can pump and hold again. And then I will release and keep doing that until the air is bled. So um, when you're using the one man system, it's a little bit faster. Um, but sometimes the bleeder can put air back into the system. So the, the two-man method works a little bit better, but it's a little bit slower. Anyway, I like to finish up with the two-man method, and I'm going to do it one more time to make sure that there are no bubbles. So pump it up, and now I'll release. Okay, there was a little bit of air, so I'll do it again. Pump it up. Okay, no air that time. I'll do it again. And I did not see any air, so I think the brakes are bled of air. So I'm going to just make sure that this is tight, and then I can take off the bleed system, empty the rest into my container, and then also add a little bit of grease onto the nipple here, just to make sure that the road salt and dirt and everything doesn't corrode this area. 
And last, we'll put the rubber cap on. That's the last thing you want is for this thing to seize. So we ended up bleeding about a peanut butter jar full of the brake fluid. So you need to make sure that as you're bleeding it, you add that much back in. 